Hello, hello, hello guys and welcome back to Joe's Ventures and today after a little break and not being able to get this video done on the first because I went off to the Chatham Islands I want to give you guys the devlog 25 for January 2020 for Prehistoric Kingdom so we're gonna get started quickly off and start reading welcome to January's development update this devlog marks the beginning of our second year of hands-on development Following 2018's year of pre-production and planning, it might seem like a long time, but we've managed to accomplish a lot of great things during the past 12 months. 2020 is going to be filled with a lot of milestones for Prehistoric Kingdom, so the most exciting news is yet to come, Park Builders. Yeah, I'm pretty excited! Okay, State of Development. Development Progress. Over the past month, we've been searching for a possible candidate to join the programming team of Prehistoric Kingdom. Finalizing after a lengthy interview process, the newest member of our team will be joining us shortly to help develop additional gameplay systems. Assisting with the weight of development, Matt has been working on automating animal setup as much as possible. Since the dinosaurs and mammals are such an integral part of the game's experience, an automated pipeline will greatly assist in providing templates where possible to avoid wasting time in manual setup. January will also, be, will also allow us to plan milestones and alpha related deadlines to hit certain marketing opportunities with our eyes on releasing alpha as an unspecified date this year it's important to keep production production deadlines in place so that's just saying new people coming we're trying to just streamline the process and they don't really know when they expect uh, alpha or any kind of release to come but here they have like a basic roadmap, uh, roadmap so they can basically just use it as a guideline so they can see what things they can make whenever so we can see starting with a January it's starting to um, uh, implement animals with basic sounds and navigation same with we working in the environment putting new plant textures and more fidelity along with plant variations into the environment polish up the tools like water paint and moats and new features things like that Fixing up the UI like uh, the Paleopedia and other management things. The shit that's been going through the air. Uh, the park economy, so basically just create a, a, a system where you can have get money, get income and expensive things like that. Basically what every park game has. Um, visitor simulations, so the simulations uh, like guests and different things like that associated with them. Along with animal welfare and AI, so they can have like set like set needs and such and a lot of things like that along with welfare so if they get grumpy they escape or whatever and staff ai and management which just basically just adds into that so they adds all the keepers and stuff and all their related gameplay systems and such so that should be the plan from 2020 because we're just starting in january going to december that's the plan and remember nothing nothing here really has a f uh, full date because they really don't want to because since it's kind of far planning, you don't really want to say definitive dates where and then just because it's an indie team, it's really hard to say to have certain dates for things. It's really just we'll do it when it's ready. So yeah, that's it. park managers looking to stay up to date can sign up to the Critivo Club. It's totally free. Provides exclusive access to giveaways, promotions, and occasional game. So if you want to do that, and you can also wishlist a uh, pre-stock game on Steam if you want to. And yeah, just click the link. I'll put the link to the devlog in the description so now we'll just be moving on to programming okay modular building selection modular pieces can now be selected and moved around while this may sound simple and constant the system needed to be robust enough to work with multiple pieces at once with the added functionality of moving across a grid in varying scales with no air room for error with selecting selection developed we integrated an outline with placing objects to ensure that pl players can see the location of their pieces at all times and regardless of obstructions. So here's a early version of the modular building system. It's I think it's really innovative compared to get other modular games like uh, Planet Coaster, Planet Zoo. So it's really interesting to think how they're figuring this one out. Let's have a look. Ooh. Let me see here. Ooh, moving it. So move, duplicate, twist it about. So this is all a work in progress, just lots of selecting and such. 
Oh, it's all selected. So that's basically what's the plan. And see, coloring walls. So that's just basic selection, duplicating, moving on an axis and such. So they've got that pretty much work in progress, but they're getting that sorted. So the next thing that's really going to be changing is uh, recoloring the walls. Based on concept art from last month, Mao is almost done with the functionality of recoloring roof and wall pieces. Each material type comes with its own blank of recent colors that can be easily transferred from another texture by copy and pasting on her X values. The default settings can re be returned by diminishing the sa small color preview on the material button. So this is so instead of like having different piece textures and like saying have like wood this wood that it's more you have these basic pieces that you can push around and then you can change the texture of each individual piece willy-nilly so it can be like have a wood stone brick things like that so we'll see here and also change the color and such so you can see here's changing the color change it to green So that works well and then you're pulling it up stacking it that's pretty cool <laughs> so with user experience is always a priority there's a handful of technical challenges to overcome when designing a system like this nonetheless the teams continue to find solutions where it matters and attempt to evolve the usability of modular building systems in this genre so they're really trying to experiment with uh, how they can make the system more because obviously a lot of modular games often suffer from a bunch of menus and very complicated moving mechanics so this this process is just really just trying to figure out a way to streamline it to make it more accessible for either newer players or just people that just really don't want to spend a lot of time building but just wanted to get it done in a streamlined manner which is all pretty cool so now we'll be moving on to the species spotlights. So here we've got two Cenozoic mammals, two popular Cenozoic icons shown off in game this month with their new designs revealed to the public. Opposing each other the drastically different temperature range requirements, the Smilodon and Woolly Mammoth are the essential beats, beasts in the Prehistoric Kingdom's roster. So here we've got a saber-toothed cat or Smilodon popolata. We'll see it's a tropical dry uh, from the Quaternary, basically the last ice age found in Argentine river formations okay so it doesn't require that bit of a paddock it's got a okay diversity not too much water likes about one to six animals does like its privacy and has a security rating about 30 percent because yeah and then we see the different skins i really like this uh fatalis skin i'm pretty sure this was based on clouded leopards and this one's more based on cheetahs and lions this is the old species here which is from North America is a little bit smaller but not quite as bulky as popular tile which is from South America so we have one this feral one is smiling on fatalis and then we have pampas which is smiling on popular tile and then we have dauntless which is this skin I believe it's based on some uh, bay cats and jagomandi which are a couple of small forest cats which are still quite interesting it's really interesting that they took that inspiration when creating these skins for Smilodon popular tar, that's the 100% one. And they all look pretty good. I really like how this Smilodon came out, even compared to the first one. I was like, oh, I didn't really like it, but I really like how this version came out, especially with the updates from people that were in the Discord saying, okay, this updates to these anatomy, to this certain anatomy and such. I think they came out really well. And here we have the next one. We have Mammothus primogenus, or the woolly mammoth. So this one, like subpolar regions, is also from the same time, about the last ice age, and it's found in the Mammoth Steppe in Russia. So we'll see. Oh, it likes a big paddock, one kilometer. Uh, that's ten percent foliage, uh, five percent water density. Has a pretty good social range from four to thirty, privacy of about forty, and a pretty reasonable security range, about fifty percent. It is a large animal and can break stuff. And I really like how all these skins came out. This is like brown skin. This is so awesome. What's really awesome is that this is also based on science as well because we have done genetic tests on mammoth hair and we found that they have very similar. They were able to have very similar colors to people. So they had blonde mammoths, brunette mammoths, redhead mammoths, and this is really cool represented in here. We can see that we have a, more of a brown steppe mammoth skin, and then we have the glacial, which is meant to be more ginger. And then we have primal which is a nice black one and i think that came out really well i really like the primal one 
And then we're moving on now to art. Look at the animations. Once roaming the lush forests of ancient North America, Acrocanthosaurus prowls with a menacing stance. With a unique shape courtesy oh, of its infamous ray spine, mouse animations help bring this shy carnivorous giant to life. Okay, I really like this walk. You just walk in. You can really feel the weight as it moves because it's a big hefty animal. It just feels like it's kind of taking a bit of effort. But it just feels heavy. I really like this animation. So this is the walk animation here. So from all different angles. It looks pretty good. Let's have a look at the running animation. I quite like this one. You can really see the effort that he's putting into moving. I really like the energy of this one. It's quite big and hefty, ain't he? He a big boy. There's really not much I can say. It's it's I like it. Other than them. Well, yeah, it looks pretty good. And then we'll move on to coexisting with ferocious predators. Camarasaurus is a stable staple sauropod of the Morrison formation. Known from three distinct species, this animal is far more nimble than its larger relatives. So what we see here is a more simple walk. Pretty big animal. We can see the three subspecies, uh, not subspecies, but three different species in the genus Supremus, Lentus, and Grandos. We can see the nice walk here. I really like how it's, I really like this walk. It just feels heavy, but not like it's struggling, because I feel like a, a lot of people often overestimate how big and lumbering these sauropods were. And plus, Camarasaurus is more of a medium range sized um, sauropod, so it wouldn't have been super slow and sluggish. So we got this nice chill animation. And if you think about it, elephants can also move at a pretty fast speed. So just because it's big doesn't mean it can't move fast. It may not be able to run, but often these larger animals have kind of like a speed walk where they're able to move at a slightly faster speed than just plodding along. So it's really nice how this one came out. I really like how the tail sways and really gives emphasis of weight. So here's the quote unquote run cycle, just a slightly faster power walk, you could say. And see the effort it's like just trying to move a little faster it's not a huge gallop or anything which i think is probably the most realistic way to make it looks quite cool and i also really like the remake of the camarasaurus it just looks wonderful you can see the colors and the textures it's just, it's just like once that was made as a remake it really just put up the quality of everything that came afterwards it was just a huge leap for whatever reason so i love it and look how we got the audio so a blast from the past we would like to show you the updated vocals of camarasaurus Introduced to our community all the way back in the Jurassic patch. Burren's done a completely overhaul on the sound set to better convey this dinosaur's enormous scale. So we'll have a quick look at the sounds. Can wait for it to load. Ooh. I like that. I like the deep booming calls of a big animal. I like that. So these sounds were sourced from seals, walruses, spider monkeys, manatees, and a lot of other animals to create these unique sounds. I really like how that big booming, deep, like growls and rumbles and such. Not like a distinct roar, but just real nice deep sounds being produced. I really like that. I like how that one came out. And there we are, F mod integration. Without good implementation, even the best sound design can fall flat when in integrated into a game environment. By using audio middleware like FMOD, the sound team can create custom sequences and parameters accessible by programmers in order to deliver a far more detailed soundscape with better user interactivity. We're only experimenting at this stage, but so far the remote results have been promising. Things like dis distant carnivores roaring with the appropriate reverb fall off. Footsteps weight increasing as animals age, and a more dynamic ambient soundscape by all our areas Byron managed to create using this toolset. The team looks to begin integrating this new audio system shortly. So this really just mainly just gives 
a lot more fidelity to the sound so you don't just hear everything at the same like, as you move away from something it'll get quieter as it gets bigger the footsteps will come hairier uh, not hairier heavier it will just like add a lot more fidelity and a lot more realism to the soundscape of the game which is obviously very important it's one of those things like soundtracks uh, sounds and such are often things that are often the most like low-key but often the most important things to giving an interactive experience in the game so this shows a worker with the experiments for prints big footprints all of that so it's just working around with that given different parameters and such so now i'll be moving on to the animal showcase so here we'll be seeing the animal redux with the anatomy vastly improved Cindy continues to show off her skill with the newer sculpts and textures for Smilodon and Mammothus. Staples of the Ice Age aesthetic, the updated iterations of these creatures have far greater resemblance to what we know the prehistoric beasts would have looked like. So here we see the updated version that every, uh, has been consulted and everything, and I really like how this Smilodon came out. You can really see the nice uh, this clouded lip and skin, Smilodon Fatalis here, and these two bigger skins are uh, Smilodon Populatar. You, and you also see the difference here in anatomy. Populatar was a little bigger and a little lankier. We can see the difference with the Fatalis here. I, don't know, I think that all came out real well. Really nice looking Smilodon. And also we come to the Mammoth. Like if you compare the... Well, we'll see that soon. Compare the old models and new models. You can just see how much the textures and modeling has grown. And I really like how these Mammoths came out. Look at that. Just look at this nice uh, Primal one. I'm, I have a thing for the Primal one. It's just such a nice looking skin. You can see the tr uh, tusks have been enlarged. It just looks great. I really like how that dark skin came out. Same with the blonde one. It's just improved drastically. So here's a comparison to the old skin. So look, you see the old model and the new one. You just really see the difference. Especially with the tiger stripes. Because obviously, these stripes is not really how cat patterns work. Uh, now we see a lot more updated, better looking one. We can see now he's got more correct teeth did you see the updated textures everywhere a lot more fidelity there and then we have a look at the mammoth we can see it just it just the anatomy is being like more detailed you can actually see the point where the trunk comes out of the, the nostrils come out of the skull you can see the tusks have been enlarged you can see the fur has just been a lot more there's a lot more fidelity we can see the it looks it doesn't look as ridiculously shaggy it just looks more realistic it's it just instead of just being like slightly cartoonish it's really this is just realistic now and it really does look great and you can have a look at Cindy's art station for better renders if you want I will link them in the description of course and here we move on to the community spotlight here we see a help picture oh, that's quite cute it's crowny and another little one is so cute and we see a who did this one? Assassin Spino did this real cute Parasaurolophus. I think that came out quite well. And, uh, ooh, Help also did this Allosaurus. I like the texture. I think it looks good. It's one of the old skins. Okay, so thank you for reading January's devlog. There are some good surprises in store from the community in the following months that we can't quite tell you yet, but we promise they'll be worth the wait. Make sure to tune in on the following development updates for even more gameplay reviews. Until next time, the PK team. So, okay, guys, we're done with this. Hopefully, you guys want to. If you guys want to follow PK, I'll give you the link of this in the description. You can get on the Discord, Twitter, Reddit, all that. And I'll also put my links in the description. So hopefully you guys like this video and subscribe and bye-bye.